we are here with Ga Gabriel Carrere and Reese Evanishan. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the Evanishan. Uh, and they uh, have a little film coming out called For the Sake of Vicious. And that is going to be, let me double check. That is going to be uh, coming out this Friday, uh, April 16th, and then on demand April 20th and May 4th on Blu ray. Gentlemen, how are you today? <laughs> Good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm well. I'm well, actually. Uh, just um, full disclosure I have not seen the film. So <laughs> I know. I Cancel know. this interview. Yeah, throw it out. <laughs> no. No, but uh, my one of my critics has me as to turn in his review. So just so you know, but talk to me about this film and how it came about. Um, I mean, like all amazing things in life, everything originates from uh, the mall, um, the food court in the mall. Um, I feel like that's where eighty percent of awesome, cool things come out of. And Reese and I are huge mall rats, and. You know, when malls were open and the golden era was rolling, uh, him and I would sit across from each other with our Caribbean queen or whatever and, um, you know, talk about movies and spit ideas at each other. And it just happened to be a time when both our previous films ended and, you know, uh, we're like, oh, what are we working on next? And we started throwing ideas at each other. And um, this one stuck to the wall. And, um, you know, he went and wrote the script. And it was very different originally. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this one stuck to the wall. And, you know, we called up our friends over at Raven Banner and uh, Abby, and they liked it. And then that's kind of how it went, um, in a sense, right? That's the short form, form That's the short form of it. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the reality of it was is that we were wanting to make something that was just really dark and twisted and we had come off of two films that we had both directed separately that had done okay but not great and we we're in a weird place in the industry and we we're like you know what we should just get together and make something that's really aggressive that we don't really have to answer to anybody about and i don't even know what's going to happen with it but let's yeah. just make something that's that's as the title says that's vicious and just dark and ugly and just kind of try and get some of this anger out. I mean, that's what filmmaking is for most of us anyways. It's it's incredibly therapeutic. And here we are now with the movie that nobody was supposed to see and now everybody's seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, give me the pitch of the film. The storyline is a nurse comes home uh, on how, like Halloween, right? Uh, yes. And uh, what does she find? So we have a nurse, Romina, who comes home from a very long shift to find that she's got a maniac there, essentially, who is who is holding another guy hostage in her kitchen. And he's accusing this guy of doing something completely heinous and awful. And she inadvertently becomes the jury to this, this situation. But unbeknownst to all of them, it goes completely out of control and spawns into this god-awful bloodbath as a home invasion descends upon the house. That's the uh, that's the short and sweet version of it. So, and uh, how did you end up with Laura Burke uh, in the role of Romina? Uh, was that a hard uh, search, or was it just a connection? Uh, she was largely. She had worked a lot with our main producer, Avi Fettergreen. Uh, she had been in another pretty well known horror film called Life Changer, and uh, Avi had produced that and said, "Look, guys, I really think you should see Laura for this role." I think she I think she'd really kill it and I remember Gabe and I originally were kind of like well you know she's very good but I just don't know if this is kind of what we're seeing for the role um but then she came in she read for us and that was kind of it I was like well yeah obviously we'd be stupid not to go with her I mean that yeah. she sort of embodies everything we're looking for in this character especially when you've got a movie too that doesn't have a ton of exposition and you really have to rely on these 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 really distinct characters coming in and kind of selling the movie for the audience for you, like right at the drop of a hat too. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, uh, it from the trailer, it looks crazy intense uh, and um, yeah, super bloody. Uh, did you guys just like, you said you decided to make some really crazy aggressive 
film where you just like, yeah, and let's do all the blood, all the gore. I mean, was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes, <laughs> I, I, think, I think I I think that was it. it. It's funny in the last interview we were saying that our original script was way more violent than what we ended up shooting, yeah. uh, mostly just due to budget and time. I think had we done the original script, it might have actually gone into the vein of maybe going too far. Uh, and I think in this movie, although we're hearing from people that it already did go too far, so maybe it's good that we toned it down. But uh, yeah, I mean, we, we wanted to go all the way. I mean, our, again, Gabe can fill in on this, but our biggest complaint with a lot of films that we were seeing, specifically like low budget action films, is the fights and the violence. Like they always, they got to a point and it's like they, they just hit this wall, you know? And we're always like, well, why don't you go further than that? Like, just push it to the max. You've got, nothing is holding you back. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted to do something like that. You know, just something like no holds barred, let's just go for it yeah and you guys co-wrote and directed correct yeah and so how how do you uh what's it like to work with a co-director writer and what what kind of made you guys say okay yeah yes to this um i think well reese is just a really good writer um you know um so you know i came up with an outline and then you know, but before that, we were bouncing ideas back and forth to each other. And he's like, yeah, that's okay. Go write the outline. So I wrote like a two page outline, gave that to him. And then he goes and writes the script. And um, from there, it was just kind of, I don't know if it changed that much, to be honest, uh, once Raven Banner and our producers got on board. But, um, you know, we split up duties and we've been friends for 10 years, uh, over 10 years. And we're always involved in each other's films. So we already kind of know how our we work. Like, Reese knows my quirks, I know his quirks, and we just kind of know how to, we understand each other. So once you understand each other, um, it kind of decreases any kind of large arguments that could come up and destroy a project or destroy a friendship or whatever, right? Um, and so I think the biggest thing at first is setting the foundation. You know, we both knew what we wanted this film to be. Um, you know, we did a lot of talking before pre-pro starts. So once pre-pro starts, you're just kind of on the same page. You know, I trust him. Um, he's, a, he's an awesome filmmaker. So I, I trust all his decisions and, and whatnot too. Right. And he knows that, you know, if I question something or I know if he questions something, then I should probably go, Hmm, he's questioned me on that, not letting me do me and vice versa. Right. Um, so that's, that's kind of how it worked. And then on set, we would kind of split up duties. Um, you know, because it was also a small space, right? It was a super small house. So we had no choice to kind of divide things up and, and trust each other on certain elements. And, and that led to post-production as well. Like he edited the film himself and I scored it, right? So we had to just wow trust. Yeah, yeah I mean, we, we, yeah, we, we had no other choice. I mean, we kind of had to do everything. We lost our, our production designer partway through. So then Gabe and I were the production designers on it as well. And I mean, I think the thing that saved it, like Gabe said, is that we both we both knew what we wanted the ultimate outcome of the movie to be. And we knew what it meant to us and what our goal with it was. And had we not had that from the get go, it probably wouldn't have worked uh, because once we got into it, I mean, there was like any production, there was stuff we couldn't have predicted. Um, and we were thrown for a loop every single day, but we knew in our hearts the movie we were trying to make and that ultimately helped us get through to the end so i think it's just about making movies with your friends who like the same movies that you do yes that helps too and it, it's after that it's pretty easy yeah the you, you talked about working on some other movies like before uh and then um just going you know let's just go in and go hard do you, i mean do you have a preferred genre um or is it just about making a good movie? You just never know if it's going to be a good movie. <laughs> That's the <laughs> thing. Giving like, it your best shot anyway. Yeah, giving yeah, it your best shot. Exactly. You always think like, oh, this is going to be good, but then it surprises you, you know? Like um, you can make stuff that's not good and you don't realize it. And then at the end you're at, you know, you're like, oh man, that wasn't good. But it's a learning experience. And I think as a filmmaker, at least for me personally, you know, making the films, that's what's important to me. 
is being on set and just actually making it after when it's done all this stuff's fun but it was almost like that was the fun part and now it's just like well there it is it's out there now and let's move on to the <laughs> to the to the next one um and i also think it's it's very difficult especially in this day and age to kind of try and constitute what what people define as a good or bad movie in their mind obviously there's very clear indicators of what a bad movie is versus a good movie but just for yourself especially as independent filmmakers you know i can only speak for myself here but the movie i did before vicious like i thought i had done everything at the time as an artist that i'm like this is what makes a good movie and then the reviews come out and you're like well <laughs> Oh. I'm just gonna go jump off a balcony now. You know? oh. So when it came to Vicious, it was kind of like the idea was, you know what, I want to kind of reboot myself as again, just speaking for myself as a screenwriter. And I'm going to throw out all the things that I think will make a good movie, and just focus on the bare level basic points, which is like, let's just make this a very primal experience intention. Exposition out the window, big care. Like, yeah. it's just like, don't, this is don't just, overthink it. Don't overthink it. It's like you were, as soon as the movie starts to the time it ends, you were with these characters in real time going for it. And let's and see just, how it works. Yeah. And cele like celebrating that anger because it is a touchy subject. It is a touchy thing that happens in the film. And I don't think any of us can actually com comment on that unless it actually happens to a loved one uh, with what happens in the theme. And I think for me, I know how I would act if that happened to my, my girlfriend or whatever, my, if I had a sister or daughter, or whatever, I know how I would act and I would lose my fucking, I would lose my mind. Mm -hmm. I would be so enraged and anger um, that who knows what could happen. I would be unhinged. Um, and that's why our, our character, Chris, he, that's the way, that's why he's like that. Um, it's a little bit of, at least for me in him, um, I would lose my mind if I found out that the person was free who did this and who I thought who did this, I would probably go after them, to be honest. Um, you know? So it's about it touching yourself. But... <laughs> What's that? So it's about putting your uh putting yourself into the work and uh just yes. being unbelievably passionate. Yeah. Um so with you're an independent filmmaker uh and you are doing this. I mean indie filmmakers, this is just it's a miracle that films get made. It's a very difficult business and it comes from passion. Uh, so my, my, my question would be, you have made a film, uh, you've made several. Uh, what would your advice be to other independent filmmakers maybe that are still, uh, you know, they're in, they're in it and they're, they're uh, in the middle of a project that they're trying to get off the ground or something? I, I would, I'll go quick game and then you can, I would just tell them that there is no wrong way to whatever path they're trying to achieve. Um, and don't let anybody tell you any different because now after the last 15 years, especially we've been told so many variations of things and none of them work or do work or not work. It's like, just create your own path. It's cliched as hell, but it is 100% true. There is no wrong way to get to where you're going. So yeah, there's, there's no combination and i feel like i've spent years trying to figure out a combination who to talk to okay what i'm going to do in three years i'm going to make this type of film in three years you know i'll move to the states you know but even that like there's no right or wrong cop there's no there's no combination uh a lot of it is luck a lot of it is timing um you know you look at a lot of films out there like well how did that one get you know whatever and mine didn't it's timing and it can come down to if someone uh, at a studio or a distributor is having a good day or a bad day, right? It, it it literally could hang on something like that. So mm. there is no combination. You just have to do it because you like doing it. Um, and you hear every single filmmaker say that or artist, and that's literally all it comes down to, you know, it just. And there's no excuse either. I started by shooting on super eight film. And I made that work. And then I started shooting on like big VC VHS tapes and cutting oh, between, cutting those? between, yeah, cutting between two VCRs. So I'm like, yeah. it is easier now more than ever. So just go make a movie on your phone for the love of God. Just make the one you want to make because yeah. you're going to be living with it for a year and a half. If you go and try to make something just for dollars, um, it's your reputation, you know, and I kind of leads into a conversation with all these YouTube stars and all these YouTube personalities. Like 
to have a facade in front of them and are they going to look back in 20 years from now going oh what was i thinking you know what i mean like mm. oh that wasn't me that's not me you know like so just make you make what you want to make yeah excellent excellent advice uh well again gentlemen thank you for taking the time to speak with me and uh thank you for creating uh and creating independent films and the films you want to see and the films you want to make uh for the sake of vicious comes out again like i said april 16th and uh gabriel reese uh thank you so much for your time and best of luck on this release thank you very much, thank you very much. all right buddy take care see you later